For years we have been talking about the changes that we would need to see to heal the world and secure the happiness of future generations. But now we know, or need to know, that the time for talk alone is done. And the time to unite, to share, to serve, and to see the change that needs to be has come. As we awaken to the remembrance that we can heal the world, we also remember that it is something that can only be achieved together. So did you, did you write this piece of song? Uh, yeah, so this piece is called Dancing with Fireflies, and it's actually a piece that I wrote um, probably about seven or eight months ago. And uh, it was actually, it was right around the time that, you know, we found out that we were expecting and I was just kind of really inspired by that whole thing. So it's called Dancing with Fireflies and I haven't, you know, really completed it yet, but it's uh that there's nothing that you know I or you know probably any artist can create that's you know more beautiful than life itself uh, you know I think in that sense we, we really are blessed you know women are blessed to be able to have that opportunity to create life and um, I'm trying to do what I can to kind of capture where I'm at mentally um, given the fact that I'm a father now so I think the music has definitely got a little bit of a softer side um, in some senses it's a little bit more um, playful, it's a little bit more uh, reflective, but you know, for the most part, I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing the same thing, but just maybe with a, a slight different type of sweetness, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to do day in, day out, musically. Uh, I, I, the only lens I, I live and breathe is my own lens, but I, I constantly try to put myself in the shoes of others um, and experience, you know, the emotions and the thoughts that they may be feeling. Uh, you know, quite often I find myself you know, you know, whether it's just walking around through the day or turning on the news or reading an article in the paper or meeting somebody for the first time, it's, it's the sort of the emotional response that you get to, you know, experiencing or even trying to experience what they're going through at that point in time. So I don't think that that element of the music has, has gone away by any means. It's definitely become probably even more important. Um, you know, having worked on a number of live performances over the last couple of years, Having had the opportunity for open for you know the, the great you know Dalvin Singh, um, you know working in the interfaith community with people from different walks of life, that human element um, just keeps coming up over and over in my music because that's that's who I am. Artists like yourself can have uh, a vital role to play in providing um, this kind of compassionate message for all for all mankind, regardless black, white, Muslim, non-Muslim. Absolutely, I I think that um, I mean now that you've asked me that that question, I think that artists are the unofficial statesmen or spokespeople in many ways of just peace and humanity and um, compassion and empathy for others. Uh, if you look throughout history, artists, no matter where they're from, whether the, you know, the oldest maestros like, you know, Beethoven or Bach, or if you look at the great, you know, Indian classical musicians or Persian um, or, you know, Middle Eastern artists or people who are even doing contemporary forms of spoken word, um, all artists generally, from a musical standpoint, they tend to be very kind of conscious of what's going on around them. If you look at painters, if you look at visual artists, generally anybody who's taking in something from the outside and then putting back something with their own creative touch on it tends to be pretty sensitive to things around them. So I find quite often that artists end up becoming the voice of many people who don't like what they're seeing as it is right now. 
Um, so I, I think that artists absolutely have a role to play and it, we are in many ways unofficial spokespeople or statesmen mm -hmm. for that. So what is this piece here? It's called uh, 187 Candles, and I had actually written it uh, on November 26, 2008. There was a, a, an attack by uh, 10 gunmen in, in, in Bombay, or what's known now as Mumbai. And uh, it, was just, uh, it was just an absolute ridiculous tragedy, um, complete senseless loss of life. Rakesh Koenka, I'm here to remember senseless killing of a spy. And we were at a candlelight vigil in Mississauga, and they were one by one. They were naming off all of the people who had been killed. And uh, I just had a little sampler with me. I was recording, you know, as they were reciting everybody's name. And then I wrote uh, 187 candles because uh, many of the reports were talking about uh, 187 deaths that came out of that particular attack. And uh, 187 is also the, uh, the police code, I guess, for murder. The fact that anybody has to lose a life at all is, is tragic. Um, you know, I, I was really, really affected by this. I just, I, I, I feel for the families who, whose sons actually went out there and did this in the first place. These, these guys were kids. You know, they, um, you know, made some bad decisions, were brainwashed by the wrong people. But at the end of the day, they were kids. You know, and they, they, they you know, they hurt families that were just like their own. But the point is that uh, your guys are doing something about it yeah, and for the next generation, for the next whoever going to be brainwashed. You are fighting those who are creating uh, the tragic event for, 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 for young people and so on. Yeah, and I, I, education is the key there. I think education is the, uh, it's really the only way. It's when people are... Um, they feel no sense of hope, no sense of future. That that's when that that desperation kicks in, and you're just you're vulnerable and susceptible to people taking advantage of that. Um, the people that you know make you do these things, they generally don't lose anything. It's everyone else that loses. It's not generally the religion that's to blame. It's the religious, it's the followers, and quite often I think it's the leaders within different groups that are to blame. Somebody in a position of power um, has something to gain by going to war with somebody else.
So I, I don't think religion is to blame. I think the, the, the core message of every religious tradition, whether it's Buddhism or Islam or Hinduism or Christianity, is peace and brotherhood and understanding. You know, the, the, the reception to that's been, you know, uh, really, really warm. Um, it's just unfortunate I even had to write that piece, but I was just really moved and that was really the only way I could deal with it. That uh, initiatives like Vital Voices are important and powerful opportunities for artists to create a sense of community. So if, if you look at history and you look at where there's been re the real emergence of arts, where arts really flourished, there was community around it. Whether it was music or whether it was um, visual art or whether it was dance or performance, where there's a community of artists, generally that society has kind of reached a place that's a little bit stable. And I think that by bringing, creating an opportunity and platform for artists to build that sense of community from around the world, it really gives you a good opportunity to get those critical views, that critical thinking coming forward. Um, and what happens is if I'm doing something here in Toronto, there's another artist doing something somewhere else in the world and you realize that what you're doing is actually quite similar, there's opportunities to kind of cross-pollinate ideas, um, you know, reach each other's audiences and take that message and amplify it. So um, being able to work with other artists um, and create a sense of community and bring their different skills and talents together is a very, very powerful thing. Anyways, I mean, it's uh, on one hand, you know, death is tragic, but um, on the other, I've just been uh, incredibly inspired, you know, more than ever, just you know, with with birth. And I think for anybody who doesn't really value human life, you should see, you need to see a birth happen, and you need to kind of understand what's really actually taking place, because it's so easy to take a life, and it's so difficult to to create a life and give a life. And when you know someone has you know lovingly raised a son or daughter, um, you know, put their heart and soul into them for, you know, whether it's 5, 10, 50 years, uh, and someone else just takes that away senselessly, it's, that, that's to me what the real, real tragedy is. Um, I, I don't think I've ever felt a greater sense of appreciation for life than anywhere yet.